Hey y'all, N4H and H here. I'm trying out amateur contact log from N3FJP. Uh, I have actually installed it before, several years ago, and I found it to be a very easy program to operate. It gives you all of the essentials for, for logging, really. I've dabbled with Ham Radio Deluxe for the uh, past few years, and there's some things I like about it, but I'm going to give this one a try. This is the screen you get greeted with when you install it. You can see there I've got a trial going on, so I don't need to enter anything here. I don't have any registration information. I'm just going to hit continue. I've already gone through this once, so I've already entered this information because what it does is it has you put in your call sign and uh, location and all that sort of thing. So I've already got, already got that entered. When you see that pop up, um, then you just go, it'll be right here in the middle. You just answer all those questions, you know, your call sign and your grid square, your latitude, longitude, things like that. And now I want to bring in my logbook that I have saved as an ADIF file from Ham Radio Deluxe. And I have it available via QRZ. QRZ is a little bit quirky in one sense. I do upload to QRZ, but I work the Battleship Iowa lately. Call sign November Echo Papa Mike. And QRZ won't let me log that because it doesn't have a number in its call sign. I wrote them about it and I got a kind of a matter of fact response. It said, uh, you, you're not going to be able to log that one because it doesn't have a number. Well, Ham Radio Deluxe allowed me to log it. So that was the only way I had it logged. Uh, okay, so uh, we're, I'm going to go ahead and import uh, that is in my downloads folder. There is the backup, uh, 12 megabytes worth. So let's see, see the green bar going across there at the top. So it's loading. And it's completed. Okay, 11,481 QSOs listed. And they're in order of uh, the oldest ones first. So I'm going to click date time. Uh, yeah, oh, I don't like the record numbers, how they're so out of order. I'm going to have to fix that. Okay, I got that fixed, and I'll show you how. Uh, I didn't want my... This is my newest contact, T32TT. I didn't want that one to be record number one. I want my very first contact ever to be record number one. See, WD4AFY, that's Andrew Blackburn the third. He was my Elmer when I worked at Motorola. And he gave me my novice test one day at lunch. CW and written. Uh, wow, I'm just looking at that, seeing so many nostalgic people uh, uh there's there's dot ka4 hhe what a wonderful lady dot and bob bob was a ham as well he made little angled brackets that with so 239s and a c clamp so you could uh hammer a, an eight foot ground rod in the ground mount this little uh bracket to it and then uh, bring a wire down from a tree limb below uh, above it Quarter wave length long, add a bunch of radials in the dirt. I built antennas that way when I was first starting out. You know, vert vertical, I had a 20 and a 40 meter. Uh, and then I built uh, dipoles as well. Anyway, I went in here, there was an option file. I'm learning my way around this. It's been a long time since I used this one. But once you import, here's import, there's export. You can remove duplicates, uh, things like that. And what I did was I selected this, log sort log on date. And that flipped everything around for me. So now it looks better. Now th this is the default look. You can do all sorts of modifications to this, the way it looks, colors, fonts, even what information you see here. I haven't dug into that yet. I've done it before when I had this program, tried it out before. And what incredible people. When I decided I was gonna go with Ham Radio Deluxe, they refunded my money. I mean, it, it only, I'd only paid for it the day before, but. Just unbelievable customer support from N3FJP. Uh, it's a guy named Scott and his wife and his son. So, uh, you know, I, I like the idea of supporting them. This doesn't have the rig control that the Ham Radio Deluxe has, but, um, you know, I can live without this. This is, that, this is so simple, though, and easy to read for my eyes. Um, 
But anyway, yeah, I'm going to poke around in here in some of the settings, the appearance, and all that sort of thing, and I will keep you posted on how that goes as I make some changes. If you select a record or records, which you can do shift, you know, and select and things like that, you can print a QSL strip, print address, delete those records, upload to Log With Your World, upload to EQSL, or cancel. Now, I'm going to be setting this up to access my QRZ account. So, okay, I won't bore you with all that. Let me get some, some things done and then I'll show you. Okay, I'm setting up the rig interface. You see right here under settings. I want it to interface with my FT uh, DX um, 10. So I'm picking COM port 10. COM port 9 is used for FT8, COM port 9 and 10. I'm picking COM port 10, and over here in the radio list, they don't have FTDX 10, they have Yesu Newer and Yesu Newer 2. I'm selecting Yesu Newer 2, select the baud rate uh, up here, top right here, 38.4, parity none, data bits 8, stop bits 2, connection power none, no, do not, I'm not selecting RTS, mode determined by rig, and then, then you click test, and wait response, let me zoom in there, and it responded, see it's, uh, I'm on 21.060 CW and there it is, it picked it up. See, mode and frequency. So now I hit done, and you'll see now it's showing up there. So I'm gonna change frequency to 062, and you see it, uh, oh, let me zoom down. There we go, there we go. You couldn't see that, I was zoom way in. So there, 21062, let me go back to 21060. Oh, 21061, let me go to 21060. All right, so it's picking that. Come on, get it down there, there we go. So it's picking that up, so when I log, it'll have the correct frequency mode and band already filled in. So that's all, that's all looking good. Let me do some more setup. Okay, I wanna show you one more thing in this video. I may shoot future videos about some other things. Uh, you can send CW from your keyboard. I'll show you how to set that up, really cool. It, uh, with the FTDX10 here, it negates the need for uh, using a, um, an FH2 remote, you know, the Yesu. FH2 remote. What I want to show you lastly here is how you can set it up to where you can send your logs to say Logbook of the World, QRZ. I use QRZ. So I'm going to go up here to e-logs. Boy, they make this easy. I'll go down to QRZ Logbook and you go to your QRZ account. I already did uh, and under your logbook settings and you, you want to look for your, uh, when you go into settings, you're going to look for your API key, which will be blurred out. You click show, copy it, paste it into that window there. And uh, and that's all there is to it. Now down here at the bottom, you can have it mark records as QSL sent and received, which is probably a good idea. I think I'll do that. And then you can enable real-time upload. So instead of waiting until the end of your operating session and selecting the new records to have them sent to QRZ, Every time you enter a new contact, it'll automatically upload it to QRZ. I think I'll try that as well. See, when enabled, the QSA log from Amateur Contact Log's main form will immediately be uploaded to QRZ when you press enter to log the contact. There will be there will not be any status notification on the main form though. Uh, first do an upload from this form before enabling this feature to be sure QRZ settings are properly configured. Okay, so I guess I'll uncheck that for now and uh, I'll wait until I make one more contact see if it uploads and then I'll know it's okay to turn that on well I hope you found the video helpful and informative I'm looking forward to playing with this uh, logging program again it is very straightforward it may not have the bells and whistles that ham radio deluxe has as far as rig control but for logging it seems to be much more user-friendly very powerful. I'll probably shoot a few more videos about this as I go. Hey, thanks for watching videos on my channel. Please stand by for 32, 34 more seconds, something like that, um, as I acknowledge five of the Patreon team long haulers who make these videos possible. And I should mention, by the way, before I uh, roll that, 
I did a poll among the Patreons a while back. So if you join, look for this poll under the uh, in the collection uh, page on the collection page down at the very bottom. You'll see polls, and actually polled the members of the team about logging programs. What is their favorite? And this one here ranked right at the top. Uh, so um, that says a lot. All right. Hey, again, thanks for watching videos on my channel. Stand by for the recognition of five of those Patreon team long haulers. Thank you so much. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.